All right, so uh, we'll get right into it. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll start with the first question then. Sure. Uh, my first question is, when did you start believing in flat Earth, and because of what was that? Got it. Why Why did I start believing in flat Earth? And by the way, I, you'll have to forgive me. So in the Netherlands, is this a high school or a university? This high is a high school. school. High school. Cool. Younger the better. Love it. <laughs> All right. So when did I get into flat Earth and why? I got into Flat Earth in the summer of 2014. That's when I first started looking at it. And I did it because I was bored. Um, and by that, I mean conspiracy bored. I'm older, so... And, you know, I was there when the internet was brand new. <clears throat> and because of that, I had a chance to visit just about every conspiracy you could think of. And the one that caught my eye much, much later was Flat Earth because I'd never looked at it. I thought that was kind of strange. I was like, well, I should be able to crush this thing because it's stupid. It's ridiculous. There's no reason anyone should look at Flat Earth. It's been disproven forever. So I sat down over a weekend and started going through as much material as I could find on Flat Earth. And after that weekend, it turned into a week, which turned into a month, which turned into nine months off and on of just trying to poke holes in the, in the flat earth and try to really to prove the globe. And I realized after nine months, I couldn't prove the globe in a court of law anymore. So I decided to make a series of videos and put them and make a YouTube channel and, and put them out there. And say ask the internet hive mind because the internet is very very intelligent as a group not as much individually i mean you know the collective hive mind is very very intelligent so that's what i did i made a series of videos called flat earth clues in the beginning of 2015 february 10th actually and put them out there and said okay i can't prove the globe anymore tell me where i'm wrong and really thought that somebody was gonna come back and say okay here's where you went wrong here's absolute proof yeah that it's a globe and the the longer i waited the not only did the academics not call me but i had subject matter experts from all walks of life uh, all branches of the military and pilots and air traffic controllers and engineers it was about everyone you could think of except for aerospace of course and they all said you know yeah it's not that crazy and here's why and they started giving me ideas and so it just kept expanding and people started contacting me it was like they'd never heard of Flat Earth before. And what I had done, uh, I know you have other questions, but let me get this out, which is what I'd done was everyone had heard, has heard about Flat Earth, but no one had made a dummies guide for Flat Earth. And that's really what I did is, is I made, a, you know, university books, you know, 101, 201, 301. I made a 101 book for Flat Earth. I said, OK, you want to know the really, really easy way to get into it. This is how you do it. And here we are, five years later and counting, and ooh, so much stuff has happened between now and then. So it really started out uh, as you trying to bl prove actually the globe is flat, oh, or, yeah. or, uh, and, or it is a globe, Yeah. but uh, it turned into uh, you believing it being flat. Yeah, yeah, and, and everybody does that. Everybody that gets into Flat Earth does it. Nobody, nobody likes Flat Earth. It's terrible. It's because they got into it. Yeah, it's because it's like, it's like, oh, I should be able to shoot this thing down. And while they're shooting it down, they get converted. Uh, the t-shirt literally reads, I became a flat earther because I tried to disprove it. Uh, exactly. And it's so freaky because it shouldn't be like that. But that's, that's the way it happens. People, and that's also the reason, by the way, why people can't go back to the globe once they're into flat earth. Because I didn't convince them. Nor did my friends convince them. And, and, you know, we didn't come up with an idea and say, oh, yeah, by the way, this absolutely proves flat earth. They tore down the globe themselves in the process. And so if you tear something down yourself, how are you going to put it back together? How are you going to reassemble it? Because in the process, you're you're so, you know, it's it's up to every individual the, of how they tear down the globe. Everybody does it a little bit differently. But the, by the time they're done, it's like, yep, the globe is dead. So even if you wanted to go, it's kind of like the Matrix. Even if you wanted to go back. How could you? Exactly. Yeah. But okay. was there ever a moment you thought the Earth was a globe? Do you mean during the process? Yes. Or, or like my entire life? Or, and, and before, yeah. Oh, yeah, no. I, I was like everybody else. No, everybody, th of course, we're told it's a globe. But the question is why? And then, in fact, there's a quote I put in the, um, 
in the description box of every video I make. It's from George Orwell, you know, the guy that made 1984, which is amazingly relevant in 2020. Um, and he, he was not a flat earther, but he said something very interesting. He said that he was talking about the responsibility of science. And he said, if you go to the street and you ask anyone how they know it's a globe, he goes, their first response is always going to be the same. It's like, what are you talking about? We know it's a globe. It's a given. It is known, right? And yeah. then you say, really? How do you know? And then people start to get angry when you try to push them on it because they don't know, they don't understand why they said the first statement. It's not that they know it's a globe. They were told it was a globe. And that's a big, big difference because he wrote this in 1946. How did everybody in the world know that it was a globe in 1946? NASA wasn't even founded until 1958 wasn't even created until 1958. The moon missions weren't until nine, 1969. So how did everybody know in the world that it was a globe? No, no one took a picture of the Earth. There were no satellites, nothing. So how did everyone know? It's because they were just this, what they were told for generation after generation. It's a globe, it's a globe, it's a globe. And you put that model with that little 12 inch toy in the corner of a, of a classroom and you leave it there until you graduate from high school, that's a powerful thing. You don't even have to. You don't even have to point at it. People just keep seeing. It. Every kid walks up to it, spins it. And you know, oh, this is where I live. <laughs> Does that whole thing? You do that year after year. That's what they believe that they're on. It, but they've never ever seen it. It's it's funny. In fact, I did an interview um, from a German person uh, just a couple days ago, and I said, um, and and she goes, she goes, have, I don't get this very often. She goes, have you ever been to space? And I go, have you? <laughs> because only 500 of the people in the world have even claimed to have gone to space. And yeah. they're all military. So what are we talking about? Anyway, sorry. Do so you believe astronauts really uh, went in space or not? Oh, God, no. No, no. In fact, <laughs> no, no. In fact, why anyone would believe the Americans, whatever the Americans say on television is stunning to me. Um, so it's just it's, in the studio. It, we, we, the Americans say, talk a lot of trash. In fact, here, I will dump a picture in your, uh, it'll, it'll screw up my bandwidth for just one second, but there's a picture I just put in, in the Skype, in the Skype chat. Mm -hmm. right. can, I see it. Can you see it? Okay. So that's just a random picture from Apollo 12 taken in 1969, yeah. right? Uh, there are so many things wrong with this. And this is one of the, the images that was put in magazines, National Geographic and Life and all that. There, this is the Americans supposedly on the moon. Remember, two astronauts on the ground, one supposedly in orbit. Most people think there was like three people on the ground. No, two on the ground, one supposedly in orbit with a ship that's going to pick them up. You know, they're going to launch up and, and get picked up and go to the moon. It's such a complex mission. So I, I will forgive the fact that there are no stars in any moonshot ever in the history of ever. It's just complete blackness. We'll forgive that because there's, oh, it's exposure settings. It's like, you can't see the stars. It's like, really? So yeah, you, I think. I think it has to do with the, the reflection of the moon, actually. Look at how bright it is. You oh, know? So maybe oh that very good. Influence. Okay. Right? It, which is why I say don't doesn't matter about the stars. I exactly. don't care. People, That is the, yeah. the most common argument. Uh, so the sun's 90 million miles away. I, I'm not going to convert it to kilometers for you. That means <laughs> that, and there's only one light source, it's the sun. All the shadows are going in one direction. They're running parallel. Uh, except here and all the other moonshots that show shadows. All, all these shadows are converging. There, the, there's only one explanation for that, and that is that the sun is very, very close, which means it's not a sun. It's just a studio spotlight. That, that's just one aspect. Uh, number two, let's do it really quick. Uh, footprints. You, you can zoom in. It's a high-def image. You can zoom in all over the place. There's footprints, footprints, for you know, in this nice, wonderful, cakey ash that apparently is only three to four inches deep which is really weird. It's uniform everywhere. Footprints everywhere, but there is no blast crater underneath that rocket engine. 10,000 pounds of thrust, not a single grain of ash is out of place. No one wants to talk okay. about it. Um, if you zoom in on the capsule itself, looks like it was made by a homeless person. I don't really care about that. What caught my eye though, was that satellite dish in the middle. That satellite yeah. dish, remember, it's not 2020. This is 1969. No. That's a VHF transmitter. Things running off a car battery from 1969. This is not classified military technology. On a good day, that thing has maybe a range of 50 miles. Maybe. And that's Morse code over 50 miles. And that's with a whole bunch of static. 
and yet that thing is punching out 10 frames of video, color video, a second, and perfect two-way communication simultaneously over 250,000 miles through the Van Allen radiation belts? No. No, 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 no. Not a chance. No way. No engineer. Find an engineer. They, no one will fess up to that. I could drive an hour from here. I will lose cell signal. And that thing had perfect communication at 250,000 miles, which is like, like, like 400,000 kilometers. No. This is absolute fabrication. The, the Americans never went anywhere. That is a studio. Studio shot. And all the pretty pictures. And by the way, that's a very professional shot. You know, very I iconic. You know, but, but again, because the photographers didn't, don't understand physics or engineering or anything else, and neither does the general public, we just bought it. Now, I understand, by the way, that the Americans, of course, you know, in fact, we had a, a commentator here on a major... Nowadays, are you, what? do you think uh, astronauts still can go to the moon or... No, nobody goes. No, why? Why? Why would anything have to be real? If you fake this, then everything is fake. Nothing has to be real because remember, this is like a rule of crime. If you're gonna, if you're gonna steal one thing, you might as well steal it all. If you're gonna kill one guy, you might as well kill them all, because you, the punishment's gonna be the same no matter what. Why would anything have to be real? If this, and I've had people come back to me. I'm sorry, I, I know I'm rambling, but the the people have, I've had people come back. It's okay, fine. The moon missions are fake. But that doesn't mean the ISS is fake. I'm just going, dude, why would the ISS be real at all? If you're going to fake the greatest achievement in the history of mankind, why would anything be real? Ever. Sorry. There you go. Yeah, that's fine. That's a nice answer. Yeah, the, for the ISS, I think um, the, end the, the only ground I have for this is that you can see it in the sky. I, oh, no, like, I'm, not, I'm not saying there isn't anything up there. There's stuff up no, there. No, no, no. Yeah. The, the most definitely will be will be but um yeah i can see where you're coming from with the uh with the moonshot we got here yeah and by the way no nobody has ever responded to me on the shadows alone that's there's four shadows right there they're all converging no one will touch it they, they just they just bypass it's like well it's like pretend like i never asked it in the first place no one will answer that question that defies the one of the laws of physics and light oh uh, drives me nuts. The converging of the shadows, you mean they, they are um, pulling together? Yes, yeah, that doesn't, that can only happen with no. either multiple light sources or a one or a light source that's very, very close. And you can test this with flashlights and, and toothpicks. You know, you can, you can test this yourself. But when you go outside, the shadows always go in one direction, and that is parallel with each other. The shadows will never line up ever, 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 ever. And again, because and it's something we're taught when we're in school, when we're young, but we forget about it. So you look at this shot, and it's like, oh, well, it was in this magazine. Oh, it was on the news. In fact, not to pick too much, but if it's on the news, it absolutely has to be true, right? Because news is absolutely objective. There is no such thing as biased journalism ever. People forget. It's like, look, the news company is owned by another company, which is owned by a parent company, which has vested interests in certain things. Um, I, I put the challenge to people over here in the States. I say, resolve these two statements. You ready? Everything on CNN is absolutely true. And everything on Fox News is absolutely true. <laughs> Can't be. It's like, because people say, oh, there's no such thing as fake news. I go, okay, resolve those two statements. There is fake news, but it only depends on your political leanings. Ugh. Anyway, go ahead. What else you got? That's right. Uh, Julian, you want to ask the next question? Well, I, I do have another question uh, about the moon, because uh, with the technology nowadays, do you still think uh, mankind don't want to go to the moon anymore because they are scared people are going to find out it's made in a studio because nowadays you can really tell, yeah. you can really fast yes. tell. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely to all those questions. Um, you can look it up. There's some, I don't know if you guys want to Google stuff while I'm talking to you. But the, sure. the, I can. the first blue marble, the blue marble shot of 1972, just say 1972 blue marble shot, Got it. was the first picture full disc picture of the earth taken from space mm -hmm. it shows which was really weird it was supposedly taken by the americans during their last mission from the moon nobody took a moon shot or an earth shot from apollo 8 all the way through apollo 16 apollo 17 they take one shot it shows the bottom part of africa and all of antarctica thought that was a really interesting choice but we'll get to that later that was the first blue mar marble shot do you know when the second blue marble shot was taken 2015 <laughs> the summer of 2015 okay 43 okay. years 
of of uh, of nothing. Nobody took any pictures of the Earth for you know full disc shots of the Earth for 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 yeah. forty three years. In fact, the first iPhone, which you can look up, the um, the one that was made by Robert Simmons, he had to he had to build that in Photoshop because there because you know the the first you guys if you guys remember the first iPhones had that that globe as the background, and he had to create that from scratch because there were no pictures of the Earth from space that were current at all. He had to completely fabricate it. So, and what was interesting is I saw that blue marble shot being used at one of the, the NASA space centers in Texas, in the United States. It was on the wall. I'm, and I'm showing this to the documentary guys. I'm going, look, that shot right there on the wall, that's absolutely fabricated. Absolutely built on a, on a machine. In fact, he, he got lazy at the end and used the cloning tool for all the Southern Hemisphere shots. So, and nope, they weren't going to put that in the documentary. No, no sorry. There's all sorts of stuff. We shot with them for seven months and they had to boil it down for a hundred minutes and they hated us by the end because, and none of them were converted because they hated the topic so much. Anyway, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. They felt attacked. Uh, oh yeah, they did. They were, they were heavy, attacked. heavy science people. But to be fair, if they, if they would have gone along with us in any way, shape or form, the response they wouldn't have gotten nearly the traction they did every film festival that we went to every person that talked to them the first question out of their mouth was are you a flat earther and the direct nobody that made that film had anything to do with us whatsoever they were absolutely on their own so yeah anyway all right uh so you have a documentary on netflix uh but do you think uh what do you think uh, other uh, uh, aspects that made the worldwide spread of the earth theory possible uh, repeat like, that repeat that question real thing, quick well um what do you think made the worldwide spread of the flat earth theory possible? oh okay why why did it spread as well as it did um yes. well part well the big thing was social media by the way and the, uh, while you're yeah. asking that question I, I sent you a picture by the way of one of our guys that uh he won't come out in public he does things quietly that's novak you know number one mm -hmm. test player in the world and uh he, you know, it's it spreads because one the big thing with social media, the the biggest thing out of that, of course, is YouTube. Yeah. Um, YouTube promoted us for three years nonstop. We we couldn't get them to stop promoting us. Uh, there was a, a wonderful documentary that came out this year called The Social Dilemma, and they were talking to one of the programmers from from Europe, and they asked him at one point you know why things get recommended for you in youtube you know like recommended for you on the right hand side and it's the algorithm. you, you gotta remember there's got to be a thousand different topics at least on, on youtube minimum right a thousand different topics he mentions one and he says well he goes if the average person that gets into flat earth watches 20 videos in a row he goes what do you think we're going to recommend and that's how it took off. We became, you know, YouTube's the biggest television network in the world. I don't know why they call themselves anything else. And we were the binge topic for at least three years until we'd saturated the market. And then they started backing off while well, that and our government got involved. And uh, we're, we're cracking down on fake news. And we were one of the three topics they brought up. Snake oil, uh, false flags, and flat earth. Out of all the topics you could bring up, we were one of them. And they said, and YouTube had to come back and said to our government, oh yeah, we're going to recommend Flat Earth less. And they did. But it didn't matter at that point. We had, we had already done so much in, you know, in three years. That mm -hmm. and, of course, the bullet points of celebrities getting into it, like Kyrie Irving from basketball, um, rapper B.O.B., uh, the Netflix documentary, all the other little celebrities that were mentioned in the documentary. They, uh, you know, Shaquille O'Neal was on board for 10 days until his sponsors came to him and said, yeah, we're not, you know, you're going to lose sponsors if you, uh, if you keep talking about it. So that's, that was the big thing. So, um, big, big names and social media word of mouth also really, really helps. Okay. So social media really had a great influence. I think. Oh, huge. The most influence. Huge. We wouldn't even be talking if it wasn't for social media. No, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. So, um, next question. Yeah. Uh, do you think the tree theory has almost reached its uh, popular top? Or do you believe it has potential to become much more popular and why? Um, well, I can show you, like I'm, I'm throwing some headlines in for you right now. This was 2019. This was last year. Uh, a lot of people don't know. We were just crushing it 
last year. Here's uh, here's another one for you. Uh, we were on the uh, covers of those three magazines in in 2019. Uh, I did a commercial, a television commercial down in Australia. I was slated just before the virus happened. I was slated to do another uh, television commercial in Europe. I did public speaking in seven different countries last year for this thing. We had conferences all over the place. Well, I couldn't even get to them all. There were so many things happening. Uh, we there was sky's sky's limit. We there was nothing we could we could do wrong. You know, it was it was completely it was peaceful. There was no negative side to it. We didn't have any people that were you know going out and, and causing you know we've never had an act of violence in any of our um any of our meetups or anything like that it was very 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 positive the only thing that, that even slowed us down was the virus that was it uh and then like, like i just went to a conference last month in south carolina we finally just gave in and said look we're going to do a conference anyway screw it and because the airplane the airlines and the uh the airports never closed which is kind of weird considering it's a virus uh that's a whole nother topic uh, you know, we, we just screwed it and said, yeah, we're going to go. So, yeah, we, this thing could get way, way bigger. I know 90% of our members are in the closet, like Novak there. No, he's not going to come out and say it. He's going to hold up that picture, which his daughter drew, which meant he was telling, you know, he's talking to his daughter about it. You know, all sorts of, just about every major YouTube channel has covered this. Just about every major media center has covered this now we haven't done cnn prime time but we did like british morning shows stuff in you know stuff in europe stuff in australia new zealand i have done stuff everywhere uh, the, the most of them are english-speaking countries or pretty close to it but like i did the like for example i opened the uh, the gather festival in stockholm last year oh, how, how the heck that's does, great how the heck does that happen I, I had no idea. It's like they just called me up and said, "Oh yeah, can you you want to fly out and open?" It's like, okay, sure. I didn't know what the Gather Festival was. You know, it wasn't a conspiracy festival, and he, the the coordinator, wanted to mix it up. He wanted to kind of like, like shock the uh, the the crowd to open. It's like, okay, all right, that's fine. Anyway, sorry, long answer. Do you think the coronavirus uh, is going to give a really big boost to the? TV because people are bored home yeah it did searching for yeah yeah new it, things. It, well it did in some sense a lot more people got involved i mean i'm still doing interviews but the um at the same time though it cut down on our public stuff you know it's tough to do meetups really tough depending on what state yeah. you're in international travel maybe gone forever depending you know because conspiracy people aren't going to take the vaccine uh so it but yeah a lot of people were home a lot more people were watching social media watching youtube watching netflix yeah the the netflix documentary which had, you know you know can only trend for so long made it back into the top 20 yeah for a while mm -hmm. which was great and internationally it, it got back in there so wonderful great uh yes it in some ways it helped us in other ways though it, it didn't you know, because it's it's even the, the the media doesn't like traveling to do certain things. You know, we were supposed to do a giant conference in Vegas this year, and we couldn't because the the big thing was the venues. Even if you could get a venue to do it, uh, required masks, and nope, no, nobody in our community would would ever wear one. No, okay. the, why not? Why wouldn't they wear masks? Oh, Just... because the nobody in the nobody in the conspiracy world believes that it's as um, threatening. It's it's not as scary as as it was made out to be. And okay. I, I there's only so many examples I could give you, but the the big thing in the United States was that they told us it was going to be a one percent death rate and a three percent death rate for senior citizens. I mean, that's an amazing amount of people. I mean, that is straight up Spanish flu. That would have been three and a half million people in the United States, minimum dead. I mean, that's that's that means that everybody would know dead people. Everybody would know dead people. And I'm not talking friends of friends. I'm saying people you absolutely know, the person that works at the salon, the guy that pumps your gas, that person that you were playing football with, uh, you know, last week. You would know dead people. And in fact, I, that's the thing I put out to my listeners all the time. I go, somebody find somebody that died that you know. That, um, that, that, that of course, the under, you, you run into the underlying conditions. It's like, look, I don't want to hear about the guy that had lung cancer and diabetes and hypertension. And he already had pneumonia. And then he goes into the hospital and then he dies. And they say he had COVID. 
I don't, I don't want to hear it. We've had people over here that have been run over by buses that they said were, were you know died from COVID. It's like, oh, it wasn't it wasn't the bus? So no, the the conspiracy crowd won't buy it. And also the secondary thing behind that is um, it's not even the masks. It's the, the we we know the masks are just a placeholder. It's the vaccine. That's what that's what the conspiracy crowd's really afraid of. They don't yeah. want they don't they don't want to take it. It's like first off, it's the the most rushed vaccine in the history of things. Plus, yes, it's uh, well. I I don't want to. I know I don't want to get into the biblical stuff necessarily, but the entire Christian community is scared to death of it because if yeah, this vaccine, I'm sorry, what? I can relate because it's it's uh, fastly developed, like you say. Yeah, and it's you don't know what's uh, going into your body. No, it, no, you don't really. No, you don't. You don't know the side effects of it, so I I can relate on that. Yeah, it's, it's, and it's, and um, yet you've got these massive companies like Pfizer and Moderna that are saying that oh yeah we've got a you know in fact Moderna came out just this morning and said oh yeah hundred percent chance you're not going to die if you take this meaning the 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 COVID will not kill you and it's like you're going to make a hundred percent claim find me a drug anywhere that has a hundred percent claim of that. And it's, I'm sorry, it's just, there's the, the lines they're throwing out there there. And yet we've got people that are, are just begging to get it here. They're just, they can't, well, because they want to get back to, to, to their normal lives. You wait before it's over. It'll be, you know, if you want a hospital procedure, you got to get it. You want to send your kids to school. They got to get it. You want to do international travel. You got to get it between those three things. You, you've got 70, 75% of the population. Anyway. Go ahead. Okay, so thank you. Yeah. Uh, Julian, uh, want to ask the next question? Question. Yeah. You went from trying to prove that the Earth is a globe to believing and trying to prove that the Earth is flat. But how does it feel for you? And how does it feel to represent the community on your channel? How does it feel to represent the community? Yeah. yeah. Um, it's... Uh, it's... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? I don't know if I represent it as much as I am like the, the press secretary for it. I call, I, I don't, you know, people say, oh, you're the king of flat earth. And I was like, look, yeah, I, 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 I don't want to, I don't want to go down that road. I'm not the king of flat earth. I mean, my, my theories and my, my, the stuff that I've done are not nearly as advanced as other people. I made the basic stuff. However, that being said, the chances of you running into, into my material when you get in first get into this are very very high because my stuff still to this day are probably the easiest to understand so i like to call myself the freshman recruiter for okay. in fact i think i've got a slide for this for something called you know the metaphorical we don't have classes or anything flat earth university which is you know the we it's it's scattered everywhere but it is that's what i do all i do is i recruit people I say, hey, you want to look into something fun? Look into this. Now, the reason why I've done as many interviews as I have is because I did a lot of phone work in my career. So when I did high level tech support for a software company for years when I was out in Colorado, and I dealt with a lot of high stress clients, people that paid a lot of money for software that sometimes didn't do what it was supposed to, and it was tied to payroll. And people got really upset about it. And so I had to do a lot of um, answering of questions and, and problem solving and coming up with creative solutions uh, under duress. And if you can do that and, and you know, hold your own and not get rattled necessarily when someone says, you're, you're, you like flat earth, you're stupid, blah, blah, blah. You know, then it, it goes pretty well. And producers in the media are lazy. I mean, people in general are lazy, but producers and media are lazy, meaning when they want to find someone to talk about flat earth, what happens is they just do a little research, just barely any research. They say, oh, type in flat earth interview, and eventually you'll run into me. And they'll listen for, I don't know, five, 10 minutes, or maybe a little longer than the background. It's like, yeah, he sounds good enough. Get him. And that's it. That's all they do. They, and which is why I tell people, you know, I get accused of, of being this and that. And it's like, look, People are talking to me because I'm because I, I give decent interviews and I put my phone number out there or my email address yeah. or both. It's like it's easy to find me. 
That's all it takes. No, no producer is going to spend an hour trying to find a flat earther, even if the interview is good. You know, I've, yeah, I've had a couple of people call me and said, oh, hey, do you know how, to, like in the documentary, do you know how to get a hold of Matt Boylan? You know, it's like, yeah, yeah, I still know how to get a hold of Matt Boylan. But it turns out he, he was terrible at interviews, so it never really resonated. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Okay. I can it, see was easy, it was easy to reach out, uh, for sure. Yeah, so. yeah, I don't mind. I mean, why would I hide? I, people are funny. You know, they'll they'll put all their information on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. And they'll put all sorts of information everywhere. And yet they won't put their direct contact info. It's like, this is what I'm doing. I'm John Smith. My life is great. And, you know, you, you know where he lives. You know kind of what their his friends look like and all this. But you don't have any way of getting a hold of him. It's like, no, I'm the opposite. It's like, be transparent. You want people to, to find you? Then put yourself out there. If you don't want people to find you, why are you on Facebook? What are you hoping for? Just a couple thumbs up, some some likes. Is that why you're doing it? Mm -hmm. So, all right. Uh, but um, is that for you the same? Do you put up um, like all your info, or is it only your email address and your phone number and that uh, that sort of stuff, but not your address? No, no. It's it's like, all. You can look every video in the description box. Every video I've made, it is my. Wow. Um, my phone number, my email address, my physical address, my real name. People, there's so many people out there with aliases, and I don't mind. Look, if you want to be, you, you you know, you don't want to put yourself out there. That's fine. But for the people that criticize me because I'm being talked to by media, that's how they find you. You know, they they will not look very far. I mean, if you type in like Mark Sargent's phone number or something like that in Google, you'll probably find it. Uh, I mean, if it, yeah, plus I'm I, test it. the what. I'm going to test it for you. Okay, test right it out. Then. And again, I've got, what, 1,400 videos on YouTube now? And every Found one it. of them's got my contact information? In fact, in uh, the the, you... the original U, um, Flat Earth Clues, I actually um, <laughs> I actually read out my phone number. Uh, and then I only flashed my physical address on screen because I thought it might be a little presumptuous to put my address out there. And, of course, I've moved from Colorado up to Seattle since then. But uh, yeah, again, easy to find, and I and I recommend. I've done this for a couple of years now. I mean, I've I've told everyone in the community. I go look, make people get to find you know easy to find you. If that means you have to get a second cell phone number, you know, because you don't want them calling on your regular line, you'd be amazed how many phone calls I don't get because that you you think well you don't want the trolls to call you. I go trolls are are lazy as like anyone else. In order for a troll to call me and not have caller ID pick him up. He has to either spoof a phone number or use a burner phone or something like that. It's like trolls, they're lazy. You know, they, they take cheap shots and, and that's about it, which is why you see them in comment sections, but rarely do they email me. I mean, that may be... But aren't you scared? Trolls are going to look for your house and maybe want where, to... Do where are they? Things. It's been five years. The only, I've only had happy people show up. I had a whole track team of kids show up uh, one time just to say hi. Did, did you get any, any treatments? Any what? Any, any threats? threats? Oh, no. No, no, no. In fact, that kind of surprised me. People say, well, you know, are, are people, you know, trying to threaten you? And it's like, well, no, because it's not me that they hate. Uh, and again, it's Flat Earth isn't like other really controversial topics. It's not, mm. you know, like human rights issues or abortion issues or religion or anything like that. It is, it's Flat Earth. It's a completely different animal. One time, I had one threat ever and that was an email threat from a guy he was in britain i think in uk and he said he was going to stab me with a 24 centimeter knife now okay. of course we're over in america so i knew full well he wasn't from here <laughs> it's like okay and i didn't know what 24 I, we still don't we don't know the metric system over here so we we're like uh what does 24 centimeters convert to it's like oh like nine inch knife okay and and i wrote it back it's like dude come on whatever and i read his email on air because i thought it was funny because i could i could tell that he was a little high on something and uh uh he said he had been hitting he wrote back he, he's using his real email address he wrote back and said he apologized because he was hitting the glass and i thought that was crack and so I, I was reading that was actually talking with patricia on, on air when i was talking about this it's like so i think he was he was on crack and he actually had to write back. It was the funniest email ever. He called it death threat apology number two with corrections. <laughs> it's oh, like, oh, okay. Oh. 
It's like, yeah, because, <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It's like, so if I died, you know, it'd be obvious who it was. And he goes, no, he goes, I really am sorry. He goes, by the way, hitting the glass isn't crack. He goes, I was on a six day meth bender. <laughs> That's Whoa. why he wrote it. I was like, okay. So other than that, everyone's been, I mean, yeah, every once in a while, like I'll, I'll do my, my podcast. I might get one call out of every couple hundred as a troll. But again, you're, you're not hating me. You're hating the idea. You can only go sit and get so mad at me. It's like, look, I didn't invent flat earth. Flat earth has been around for hundreds and thousands of years. So why, why would you hate me? And so I think people realize that when they get really worked up. Is, is this, look, I'm not the only guy out there. And plus, it doesn't affect them directly. It's not, it doesn't offend their, um, their personal, what's the word I'm looking for? Their personal belief system. Uh, it's, it's not, again, it's not, again, like religion or some sort of um, political statement. It is merely a worldview. And so they can only get so mad and then they pull back. So yeah, trolls, for the most part, stay away. I've yet to run into any troll. Now, it'd be a little different, by the way, if I lived in a major city, you know, because it'd be convenient for someone maybe to swing by. I'm up on an yeah. island uh, up uh, north of Seattle. So, um, but nobody visited me when I was in Colorado either. Anyway, there you go. Okay. That's good to hear, yeah. for sure. Um, so, uh, the documentary Behind the Curve gave us a nuanced ren rendering of the old uh, theory. Mm -hmm. Scientists, as well as theorists, uh, got to share the findings in this uh, documentary. Unfortunately, a lot of people don't give the flat earth theory a chance because they think it's ridiculous. Right. Why do you think so few people really give it a chance? Uh, I think actually more people give it a chance than you might think, but they're not public about it. Um, okay, so like Djokovic. Yeah, like like Djokovic and, and others. I mean, there are a lot. Of, I know family members, by the way, that won't they, they said, you know, I'm on board with you, but I'm not going to talk about it because uh, I'm, I'm worried the backlash, not necessarily from friends and family, the big one's coworkers. Uh, coworkers, you know, you, you, can, you can dodge family members for a while, but you got to go to work. Yeah. So, yeah. um, and I, look, I've talked to, I know cap captains of industry, which I cannot talk about. I know celebrities, which I can't talk about because they, um, they don't want to come out. And the big thing was because of Kyrie Irving, the, the basketball player. But how do you know, but how do you know they believe the rich flat? How do I know they believe? Did they tell you? Oh yeah. I talked to them. I, I've spent time with them. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they, they, they just won't because they're worried. Look, Kyrie Irving was a great example of this. He was 25. He won a championship, best friend with LeBron James, blah, blah, blah. And he, um, he comes out during a podcast and says that he, uh, here's, here's LeBron and Kyrie right here. He comes out during a podcast and says that, uh, he, he's into flat earth on his way to a media event, an all-star game press day. And what do you think the media was going to do? They came after him and he thought, wow, I've got my ring. I got millions. I got my own shoe. What are you going to do to me? And he forgotten that uh, when the, the media has access to the locker room every day, it's like fine, you know, the championship's over. You let you know they every night they can they can go in and talk to him about it, and so they just kept hammering him, kept hammering him over and over. And celebrities don't necessarily want that; they don't want to be labeled. Celebrities hate labels, so mm -hmm. yeah. But some come so out. Like here, here's a, here's a great example. Um, there was a footballer out of um, England. Uh, Freddie Flintoff, he mentions it in a podcast. That's the headline the next day. <laughs> you know, he's he's wow. the media he's immediately labeled. Oh, immediately labeled, absolutely labeled, and that label does not go away. That is permanent. So, yeah. So you know, and and you know, but then again, we don't mind. Like here's a perfect example. Here was a thumbnail from um, PewDiePie. You know, that's how you know it's a terrible picture of me. But that's that's how you know you know that the people are looking. Oh, PewDiePie, whether or not whether or not he buys subs, was still one of the biggest channels in the world, and he had to cover it because he knew it was trending, and it just wouldn't it would never die. Okay, so it kept living on in these these famous people there. Oh yeah, their beliefs and their influence yep. on other people. Yep, yep, yep. All right. 
Um, Julian, uh, next question. Yeah. Well, in the documentary, at the end, the test proved the Earth, well, is being a globe. Right. But what's your opinion about this thing? Oh, yeah, that's the power of editing right there. Yeah. The director this... hated us. Oh, my God. To this day, yeah, he, he, I, he, he never called me afterwards. I talked to one of the producers a few oh, wow. times, but the director hated us. Um, and Why? you can... You can listen to this in the um, the director's commentary of the uh, of the documentaries. I think it's only on iTunes because I listened to it. And I was like, wow, there's director's commentary? I had no idea. Months had gone by. And I listened to it, and it's boring. I'm listening to it with Patricia. And it's boring, 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 boring until they get to the part where that 12-year-old kid is asking me questions when I'm on the podium. It's toward the end of the movie, at, you know, during the conference. And... All of, a, all of a sudden, the director's commentary changed. It's like they said, yeah, this is when we had to make a stand against Flat Earth. Up until that point, it was supposed to be a human interest piece. But once that 12-year-old kid was answering questions, they felt very threatened. It's like, well, you shouldn't get kids involved. It's all fun and games until there's kids involved. And so they, um, that's when they spun it. They, they had to spin it, as, you know, and do as much as they could in editing. As, and Jaren was a perfect example. Now, yeah, to... because um, the documentary, it all looked like fun and games, like you say. Yeah. Also, the documentary. Yeah. But that test in the end, it felt, it felt kind of wrong. Because, like I said, the whole documentary was uh, nuanced. Yeah. And advanced the test and boom the documentary is over and you have that taste you know yeah 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 oh yeah they and took only that, that taste. they they took that shot at the end and i it worked because i sat in audiences and people felt better when they when they had that shot it's like okay it probably isn't flat however mm -hmm. what they didn't know well there was two things one jaron completely screwed it up because we didn't know that jaron when he was doing the laser experiment was shooting out at a place that he had never even been to in the daylight. He didn't even have line of sight and he did not know. He just went to Google Earth and found this spot that was not that far from his house next to this canal, which looked flat, you know, the, as far as Google Earth was concerned. And he gets down there and he shoots it live for the very first time with the camera crew. And any producer will tell you, it's like, you never go live the first time. You always do a dry run to see what, what you're looking at. So like the first time, the first test he did, he melted the condenser, but that's fine. You know, that's just one of those mistakes you learn. You can't run a laser um, at full power um, for any length of time because the, the lens will eventually just fail. It's meant for short bursts. And the second time, he just, he didn't have line of sight. He didn't do it. And we didn't even know that until a couple months later because people were harassing Jaron constantly after the, after the documentary came out. And Jaron finally drove out there. And I'm watching this video. It's like, oh, you know, he's driving out to the, the site during the middle of the day. He goes, this is the first time I've been out there during the daytime. I'm going, what? <laughs> it's like, why, why didn't you go out there during the day? Why would, you, why would you go out to the site at night for the first time with a live camera crew and i think he thought the same thing everybody else did it's like well the documentary's not gonna not gonna get picked up by anybody it's not gonna and even the the director you know the producers people forget that 99 percent of all films ever made are never seen by anyone because they're just they're just not bought they're they're not um uh they're not purchased by anyone you can't find a distribute for them because there's only so much room out there and so Jaron didn't take it as seriously. And, you know, I think all of us fell victim to that. You know, we've all been wired up. We've done so many interviews and we've done other you know, film projects. But we don't, you don't think that it's going to go everywhere. You don't think it's going to, you know, be a worldwide thing. So. Anyway, okay. there you go. Okay, thanks. Again. Um, so... Our second to last question, mm -hmm. due to popular belief on the earth being a globe, yeah. uh, people who believe it's flat are often left at. Um, how do you deal with lovers and haters? Uh, we make a list and then we're going to kill them later. No, <laughs> uh, no. What, what's going to happen? No, we, um, we, <laughs> we don't, I don't mind. As a matter of fact, people will give me grief because they'll say, why didn't you yell at that guy for giving you a hard time? You know, and why, why aren't you, why aren't you, why don't you get upset when people make fun of you? And I say, because I used to be one of them five years ago. I was one of them. 
I, I would have, yeah. in fact, I, I said in the first thing, I don't know if you guys got a chance to watch the clues, but one of the first lines was, uh, I know friends that are absolutely convinced that the royal family of the UK are made up of lizard people, right? And then I come to them and I say, yeah, but what about this flat earth thing? And they're like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's like, what? <laughs> it's like, what you, about the lizard what? people? Lizard people are fine, but flat earth, no. No, and they—that's that's that's absolutely right. They um they flat Earth is so big that they they can't take it, and so I can't to yell at anyone would be hypocritical. You know, I how could how what what leg do I have to stand on as far as yelling at people about this? Um, I don't mind. In fact, the um, there's an old saying, I think it's a United States saying, which is uh, even bad publicity is free. And when it comes to media, which is, you know, which was converted into, oh, publicity is good publicity. It's like, eh, I guess. But really, any bad publicity, even bad publicity is free. Meaning, it doesn't matter if the, the producers told me this, uh, wow, back in 2017. They said, it doesn't matter whether the audience loves or hates a topic, as long as they're engaged in it. And what he meant by that was, sometimes... It's, and you've seen shows, I'm, I'm sure, where you you watch a show because you want you love to hate something. It's like, oh, like Jersey Shore was a great example. A lot of reality television over the United States where you see characters and it's like, oh, I hate that guy so much. It's like, why are you watching it? I don't know. I just love, you know, I just hate them so much. You hate the yeah. villain. And we are we are the villain of the conspiracy world. And so it, if that, and, but in that process, I'll, I'll give you, I'll give you a quick example. There was a, uh, a big celebrity, um, that was talking to me about how he found out that, uh, how the world was, you know, with the whole thing. I, and he goes, and he goes, I found out, he goes at the, uh, the Oscars, you know, the, uh, the film awards over here in the United States, um, during an Oscar party. I go, really? And he goes, yeah. And I wrote this in the last book I, I did where Amy Adams, the actress, uh, walks into the party and people people were already talking about conspiracies and whispering. And she goes, no, you can put all that BS to bed. Let me tell you the crap my father's into. Flat earth. And she goes on this jag where she's just ripping it to shreds, right? She's just, she hates it so much. Well, during that rant where she's telling people how much she hates it, she got people to look it up on their phones without even asking because it's like, wow, what the heck's wrong with Amy? You know, why does she hate this thing so much? Click, 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 click. And she, uh, she converted people right there in the room without knowing it. So that's why, you know, how can I get mad at anyone that laughs at it? Everyone, in fact, I would love more troll channels to make more videos about us because every time the, 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 the analogy I give is that Every time a troll video or a troll person tries to attack a flat earth, it's like shooting wooden arrows into a bonfire. From a distance, it looks like you're doing something, right? But really, all you're doing is adding wood to the fire. That's all you're doing. You know, you're, you're just making it bigger. Every time the media attacks, every time they take a, take a shot at us, you are converting people. So no, I, I, I don't mind at all those magazine covers that I gave you. Do you think they looked at us kindly? <laughs> no, no, they didn't. But we made the covers. I mean, it is t tough to make the cover of Newsweek. It is tough to popular science. Come on, Skeptic Magazine. Pfft. There's no way they should be covering this topic at all. You know? So the haters are actually cl actually uh, kind of appreciated. Yeah, are, are you way. kidding? Laugh, laugh all you want. In fact, while you're laughing at it, tell your friends how stupid it is. You know, eventually you're going to run into someone. It's like that because that's how people, people get into it. People say, oh, it's really stupid. I'm going to look it up and spend 10 minutes looking at it. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Wait. You know, and then four hours later, they're not sleeping. And then 12 hours later, they called in sick for work. And they just, some people just get dragged into the rabbit hole. And it's like, great. Wonderful. Love more of that to happen. Okay. That, that's just great. <laughs> attention is attention. Nope. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So uh, for our last question, yes. Um, take it away, Julian. <laughs> <laughs> do you believe in any other theories? And if so, do they associate with the flat earth theory? <sighs> That's a tough one. 
Um, <laughs> the do I believe in other theories? Yeah, you bet I do. Um, I I believe any in any big ones. Yeah, sure, huge ones. But the thing is, how huge can they be compared to compared to flat Earth? Flat Earth is this giant umbrella that. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, here's the the cover of Bob's album. Let's see if I got that in there. Yeah, there it is. Is a cover of Bob's album where uh, everything is inside of the flat earth so here's the thing when you get into flat earth if you can actually believe it um then you have to revisit every conspiracy that's ever been out there and so like you know if you, if you were on the fence and you weren't sure because flat earth is such a big deception that if it's possible it's like well heck if they faked you know if you could fa hide the shape of the earth, you could hide anything. So that makes things like, I don't know, 9-11 way more valid. You know, because why wouldn't it be? Why couldn't it be? You become open-minded to just about anything. Uh, Pearl Harbor, uh, just about every American major war, Roswell. I mean, I even started coming up with, you know, one some of my own. Panama Canal, that's one of mine. That's an exclusive you know, the fact that you could fake, you know, how many people or hide the fact that how many people died making the Panama Canal. P things are done for the greater good. And that's what I've been trying to, to get people to understand. It's not that there are conspiracies and then there are legitimate news stories. What it is, is there are media sanctioned conspiracies. And then there's stuff that the media won't sanction. And then those are considered myths. So like Enron, a fantastic um, financial scandal over here involving an oil gas company, you know, so big they had, the government had to change the rules when it came to taxes because these guys swindled people out of billions of dollars. You know, that's sanctioned because it was, you know, it was a, a, a media safe thing. But if the, the media doesn't want to talk about it, if the producers, the production teams or the parent companies don't want to talk about it, then it's considered a conspiracy and therefore um, not credible sort of like i will go into the uh, quick into the bible stuff you know there's there's books that are in the bible and then there are non-canonized books well the people you know bible heavy heavy bible people will be like oh if it's not in the bible it's absolutely not part of anything well there's and then there are people it's like no you should really look at the the non-canonized stuff it's like nope nope those, those aren't official those don't have a stamp of approval and so but, how, how should I sum this up? Everybody knows that this is a world based on deception. It always has been and always will be. It's just how we're, how we're made. There are lies and conspiracies. And conspiracy, by the way, is just when three or more people conspire together to lie about something that's either illegal or unethical. That's all a conspiracy is. Um, we all know there's lies in business and politics and sports and entertainment and yes, even journalism and science. There's lies, there's lies everywhere, mostly because of money and power. You know, people, men, men will, will lie, cheat, steal and kill for, for money and power all day long. The, it's just one of those things. The difference is, is that I'm willing to look at all of them, whereas the average person on the street is only willing to look at some of them. Everyone's got this imaginary line in the sand, which everything on this line is something they're willing to look at. Well, it's like, okay, well, you know, there, there's these, it, it's a comfort zone thing. They don't want to feel uncomfortable. This conspiracy is interesting because it involves a sports figure, an entertainment person, you know, something that doesn't really affect them too much. And it's not too dark and sad and scary. But there are other conspiracies out there that are dark and sad and scary. And, and people are like, no, no, I don't want to look at that. That's depressing. That's upsetting. That's why people like happy endings in movies. And that's the difference. Like, I, I like looking at this stuff. Um, Flat Earth is not one of those dark, sad, and scary things. Flat, the reason why it resonates as well as it does and why there's so many women in Flat Earth and why we even get kids in Flat Earth at the conference I was at, I was signing autographs for 10-year-olds. Why that was happening is because it's, a, it's an interesting, positive thing. Because if it is built, if it is flat and enclosed, when you know you're living inside some sort of snow globe, then it was built deliberately by something that is much bigger and older than ourselves. And if you're not a person that goes to church, fine. It's an advanced civilization, kind of like the movie Contact. 
But if you are into church stuff, well, then it's one step closer to finding out the real reason why we're here, which is which is the biggest overall question is, is like, why are we here? Why? Why am I walking around? Why are you walking around? So Flat Earth yeah. takes a big leap in trying to answer that question. If you look at it that way, we could also be a simulation. Of oh, some, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Advanced, uh, yeah, 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 Ab absolutely. And I, I have, in fact, the, the last chapter or towards the last chapter of my book, the uh, I talked about that, which is if it is flat and enclosed, it's probably virtual. That Because that yeah. is how everything is built. I know you guys are young, so you'll get this. Every simulation, we'll just use the entertainment industry. Every simulation that's out there is built on a flat enclosed world. I don't care if it's Minecraft or Fortnite or GTA or whatever the hell's out there. World of Warcraft was one of my favorites. It is built on an sure. absolutely flat box. It's a cake box. In fact, the it's a shallow cake box. The ceiling is very, very low. Um, in fact, when you're, you know, I come from the game development world. The the um, the sky, everything in the world, in the sky, and you know, all the the stars and the planets in the sky, they're built on something literally called a skybox system, because computers don't like circles. They don't know how to draw circles. They can only draw tiny, tiny right angles, which is why everything is is squared off. Everything is pixelated, and uh, yeah, virtual, no doubt, in, in my mind. Uh, anyone has it, which would imply that God is a programmer. This goes into a whole other thing. Um, anyone has any doubts yeah. in that? Look up the um, the double slit experiment. You know, a classic physics example, which happens in software all the time. And um, the uh, the another one that's easy to find. It's on Wikipedia called Neuroscience versus Free Will, which says that not only is it virtual, but it's predestined, meaning all the decisions we're making now we made before. We, we preloaded all the all the decisions ahead of time and we're just kind of going through the motions which is so so weird uh, look that up if you get a chance it's it's fascinating okay. i can believe that do you sure. think there are other flat earths like this one outside this one sure why not why why would this one be a one-off i mean the, the last thing you would want to do let, let's let's put it this way if you were the almighty or an advanced civilization you'd have tons of these things lying around yeah. and in different states of development it's like oh look they just invented the wheel and those guys just uh, got, yeah. got jet pl like that yeah i see like like uh, i mean i mean because we're not we're talking about something that's outside of the known universe meaning people's like well, what about space i was like who said there was space nasa those guys they said there was space we could be sitting on somebody's desk Right now, just this object, you know, sitting on the on the ground, you know, or on somebody's lab table, along with a whole bunch of others. You know, it'd be very, very easy to do. But also, yeah, but the virtual aspect of it, yeah, sure. Why, why the heck not? I, I'm big. Look, I come from I come from the game world, where we're we we are desperately trying. We have been for decades trying to create the perfect virtual world. And we've done it, you know, the movies and the Matrix and the 13th, 13th floor is a perfect example of that. Um, which came out the same year as The Matrix, where the, the, the concept was that a software company that was making a virtual world all of a sudden figured out while they were making it that their world was also virtual. And that way, it's an old story going all the way back to the 1960s. I mean, look up the origin of that. It goes back to a book called um, Simulcron 3. I mean, it's something that we've, you know, we, as soon as we started creating um, computers and digital technologies, we immediately started science fiction. That's when it was born. People's like, well, what if this? And what if this? What if? It's, it's brilliant stuff. I must say, if we are, if this is uh, like a, um, a simulation, yeah. the graphics are damn good. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> isn't that the big difference, right? Is the difference between, yeah. um, uh, hang on, we gotta give you the, the Novak thing. The, um, the difference between our world and the virtual, you know, and the virtual simulations we make. What's the difference? Um, resolution and senses. That's it. You know, in, in the virtual worlds that we're making now, we have sight and sound, right? We don't have touch and taste and uh, smell. So add three senses and better resolution. There you go. Although we're never going to get to that point um, because the, the, there's a medical side of it, which just wouldn't be allowed. Meaning the only way you could do it here is if you actually plugged into the human brain. 
you know, some electrochemical process. And I don't think there's a there's a a, a, a any sort of government administration that would allow. There's too there's too many. Our system is based so much on money and litigation. There's all sorts of stuff we we can't do because the it feasibly it just can't financially it can't be done. The infrastructure can't handle it. Um, two quick examples would be like you seen the movie The Purge. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Purge can never ever ever happen. Why? For a very simple reason: the insurance companies. You're talking about billions of dollars in property damage in 24 hours. There is an insurance company in the world that would sign up for that. You know, you know, they would have exact. It just couldn't happen. It would be too damaging because basically what would happen is the the insurance companies would go to people and say, "Oh yeah, by the way, you might as well protect your building because we're not covering it if it burns down." And so everyone would just be, you know, there'd be people just set up around these buildings, and no one would do anything. It'd be ridiculous. Um, the other thing would be, um, uh, oh, it was the big thing. Sorry. Lost my train of thought for a second there. So purge wouldn't happen and, oh, uh, automatic cars. <laughs> so you've heard of like self-driving cars. Yes. Yeah. But they're only kind of self-driving. <laughs> right? the, they'll, they'll self-drive for a little while, but, but then, but you're not going to get a self-driving car in the inner cities. And the reason is, um, I can tell you from the American experiments we've done not for any speed is because once some, there was, so they tested it, I think Uber did it. And um, uh, an elderly woman uh, got run over in the, um, in a crosswalk. And the question is, it's like, people didn't, don't think of this. It was like, okay, so she died. Who pays? That, because b before, if you would run over somebody in a crosswalk, it'd be like you versus that person, right? It's a fairly, you know, one-on-one -on -one insurance thing. Well, now if you get a self-driving car, who pays the, uh, the, the car service itself, Uber, the car company, Chevrolet, Ford, uh, the software company that made the software, was there multiple software companies involved in the self-driving software? It just gets so convoluted and so tricky because no one wants to pay, you know, it's just a fight over money that they just abandoned it. They said, Nope, we're it's, it has nothing to do with the technology. We have stuff that can drive cars better than people. But if something goes wrong, no one can agree on who has who's liable. It's basically corporate liability issue. Anyway, sorry, I know that's boring. But... No, no. But, uh, it's, it's uh, really not boring. Early. I'm sorry. What was that? I, I don't think it. Oh, okay. Well, uh, uh, what else? Yeah. What else can I do for you? Back to a little bit earlier, earlier what you said. Uh, if life is a simulation, what do you think will happy, uh, happen with our body and soul if we die? Huh. That's, that's a great one to end on, actually. Um, the, so what I believe in is I believe in um, something cyclical, meaning we are here for a, we're here to learn something. It's not a prison planet and it's not necessarily an enter, uh, entertainment planet. It's like a school. And I think we're here to learn perspective, meaning if this world is 99% conflict, Meaning it doesn't matter how beautiful, how powerful, how talented, how rich you are. You always have something to complain about. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. billionaires complain about all sorts of stuff. Uh, models, you know, worried about their looks. Um, athletes are worried about, you know, rocks. One of the great sayings out here in the United States is rocks. All rock stars want to be athletes and all athletes want to be rock stars. They all they both envy each other, which is so weird, you know, but it's true. But you can look at them. It's it's, it's so odd. So. If this world is 99% conflict, I believe that I believe in dualism, that for everything, there must be a polar opposite. You know, you can't understand cold until you've had hot pleasure without pain, light without shadow, and so on and so on. And so if this world is 99% conflict, there has got to be the other side of this world has to be 99% um, unlimited, you know, freedom. And so you are just born again or? Uh, I don't know if it's necessarily to, to, to a re. Learn? I don't think I don't know if it's a reincarnation. Hang on one second. Sorry about that. There was a cat. The um. No. Uh, do I? Uh, I don't know if it's reincarnation because we don't. Oh, that's the other thing. We don't have any memory of our previous life, and that's deliberate. No. So if you're in an unlimited universe and you want to appreciate it, you have to come to a place like this. You have to come to a place with a limited lifespan. And a limited, um, you know, all sorts of ways you can die. I mean, this place is built on, there's a line from the Matrix, you know, built on misery and suffering. 
That's all this place really is. Yeah, there's some moments of bliss and contentment, but you're not going to be able to avoid the conflict forever. So when you come here, though, that memory has to be blocked. It, it's absolutely essential because if not, come on, people would just bail <laughs> constantly. You know, it'd be like on, online gaming. Why do people bail on, on multiplayer games? Well, because there's no repercussions of it. And it's like, oh, I can just start yeah. another one. I mean, the first time anyone ran into any hardship in this world, they'd be like, oh, this place sucks. I'm leaving. Where's a bridge? I'm jumping. And it would be like um, those um, those loop movies like um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow or something like that. You would, you would just kill yourself. So, so what you do is you block that memory out and you live your life and you, you hang on for as long as you can because when you're done, you will appreciate the unlimited universe a lot more. Okay. Well, um, very interesting. Yeah. Do you have any other questions, Julio? No, I, uh, I think uh, I heard a lot of stuff. Cool. Any other resources you need from me? Any, you, you know, my channel, you know, all the links. Yeah. The, the thing I try yeah. to recommend to people, you know, I've got a subject matter playlist, which is all, all sorts of experts that have, have talked about this stuff, you know, which is, which is wonderful. Um, the tests and experiments playlist, some great experiments we've done that weren't shown, by the way, we had done so many experiments by the time that documentary had done, but they're only going to cover the stuff that they can, they can film. They're not going to show the clips of it, which I think was hilarious. Um, and just, I mean, again, go through the playlist. There's tons of stuff to look at. And if okay. you, uh, if you have another link, feel free to send them in the chat. We will check them out. Oh, yeah, yeah. In fact, here, yeah. I'll, I'll leave you with this. One second. Uh, Flat Earth Links playlists. Here are... Just go through some of these, but I would start with the... Um, I would start with the experiments playlist because they're short, they're to the point, and we start out with a great one outside of um, California, you know, looking at oil rigs, which is great. So that's what I would start with. Okay, that's kind of fun. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, we'll get, um, for closing off, we'll um, process this in our project. Cool. So thank you very much for all the info you gave us. Yeah. That's just very helpful. Um, about this recording, it will be published on your channel, I think. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so then uh, that's fine. Okay. That's all right. Um, and we'll get back to you with the final product, I think. Cool. Uh, yeah. Again, it's going to be a Google Translate job, but... Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> if, um, if you need anything else, let me, uh, let me know. I'm easy to find. Absolutely. All right, guys. Okay, really, thank you. Thank you very much. Have a have good a one. Have a nice day. All right. Yes. Yeah, have a nice day. All right. Bye-bye.